Good evening, everybody. This is David Slash Asher. And, well, so far joining me is MPX. Yeah. Uh, still no clue what's going on with, uh, Fetas. He's having a vacation. Whether this vacation lasts, you know, a month or a year is up to him. Yeah. Yeah, it's just... I'm seeing if I can at least grab one other person so that it's just... Not, not me. Not quite as... <laughs> I haven't fully learned that keeping things up without, you know, putting foot in mouth. Well, it is a skill. Yeah. Let's face it, the ability to talk and keep up without dead air happening is a problem sometimes. Yep. Sad to say, I did not do any grinding, because I was a mixed bag of worried about everything. But I think we were pretty much... We, we have ten chests left? That's what, I think a lot of fair amount of hidden chests. Yeah. Not to mention, it's also a question of how many of the chests are traps. Yeah. Because isn't that a thing? Yeah, that's the thing, and... Makes it vastly different. Yeah. Since I'm doing Geomancer... Hey, trying no to more. level them up desperately. Not doing Geomancer anymore. It's like, now I have to actively avoid the spike pits. I thought you equipped him with the uh, danger walk. Abilities... What? Oh! Hmm. Yeah, I put light stuff on him. Really, I'm not sure how many times I've escaped, but... Probably a good chunk of the time. Let's see... Okay, so I still have the Hidden Passage equipped. Uh, most of the mummies are gone. Wait, this was... Uh, hard. Didn't even have to go down this route. Sorry, everybody. Just trying to get reacquainted and what needs to be done.
Did I lose 88 magic? Uh, maybe. this guy. Okay, got the 88 back. Unfortunately, I don't have much to talk about. Yeah. Ugh. Like, was there any new announcements that we didn't already know from the summer game stuff? Mm. None that I know of. Actually, that's a better question. Should we call this, instead of E3, Keely 3? Uh, oof. Admittedly, that could work. Um, 
I mean, things we could talk about, although probably not in the best option. Uh, would be... Various other things, like talking about maybe... Okay, I think I got all of those. Let's fuck this person. This is a garbage fight. <laughs> save, but it's like, if I die, I'm just gonna load from that save. Okay, here we go. Fuck the Lamia Queen. <laughs> This is where we left off last time. No, that's how that works.
think that's our second ribbon. And do we want to go down... No, monsters. The damned. Okay, these guys. Aren't you going to lose that as some things? Yeah. Final Fantasy V, and basically it's just us two? Because fate has not shown up in forever. Uh, well, he usually does. He hasn't shown up for the past two weeks. Yeah. I mean, uh, Asher has seen him online. And various other formats other than this part. So we're just simply guessing that he's just taking a vacation. Yeah. Maybe he's also having a goblin week. One month. Who knows? Yeah, one month. Uh, I don't think it's anything terrible, but who can say? Yeah. But, so, you've probably seen the news. Um, Dragon's Dogma. Oh, I'm going to say be more specific. No There's way. a lot of news yeah. that has been going on. I mean, that's the concept of news. Yeah, so what about Dragon's Dogma 2? Did it get a release date or something? No, just the fact that we can actually Which see. Which was on Steam. Oh yeah, I went through my wish list that did it today. Like just a, just an hour ago or so. <laughs> so, are you annoyed that there are cat people? Mildly. It's not game breaking for me, but it is mildly annoying. Especially Even though they're not they like trying to do like cutesy cat people. Yes, if they would have done cutesy cats people, I would have been like, yes, thank you. But since they did fucking Khajiit, I'm like, you, gross furries, get out of my fucking game. 
Frothgar. <laughs> I'll mod the mount later. I'm sure there's already somebody working on it. Somebody like me saw that and went, you gross, and immediately started working on a mod. Other than that, are you hopeful for the game? Oh yeah, I vote for first game. I don't know much about it, but then again, I don't think anybody really does now, at this point. Well, okay, you remember when we initially found out the news, it was because I was initially watching somebody's 50-minute analysis of the trailer? Yeah, they're over... I, I saw that video, I didn't watch it, but I saw their, like, their ultimate spurg out, like, analysis of the trailer. Well, 50 minutes is pretty much spurred out when you consider that they ended up stating that they were talking for 90 minutes unedited. Yeah. <laughs> about a two-minute trailer. Yeah, a two-minute trailer where they go over everything in exactly detail. I can tell you now, this is what we know, that it is well, in fact a game. <laughs> well, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> but uh, a couple things. A, they're reusing a fair amount of the art art assets, essentially. Like, obviously it's being modernized because it has been over 10 years. Yeah, that's not... See, some but people it's... consider that, like, really bad form. Like, the people who complained about all the reused animations in Elden Ring from, like, the first Dark Souls. I'm like, I don't care. Well, a lot of those animations are probably semi-modified or just simply, you know, almost, like, in jokes. Like, the entire uh undead uh, undead uh spurg out attack from dark souls one yeah and the, the one that people constantly pointed to and made fun of both the people that were like lol that's funny that they're keeping it and people like oh they're so lazy why are they reuse this animation from fucking dark souls one and it's the the animation of the skeleton putting itself back together because that was a really good animation <laughs> Like, I mean, same animations, Demon Souls, fucking lazy game developers. And versus <laughs> like people like Mass Effect, where it's like, ah, oh. elevators. Yeah, it's elevators. You gotta, gotta hide everything with elevators. No loading screen, but really long elevator rides. But anyway, some other thing like they did a comprehensive analysis on a lot of the equipment and weapons, even going as so far as to say that there are some permutations or changes. Like, some of them seem to be slightly modified, or changed. Like, they're not exactly the same. Well, I mean, I would hate it if they were exactly the same, because I pretty much played that game to death years ago. Well, yeah, but there's a difference between, like, the initial assets that you're seeing. Like, if they just simply add on to it that, you're not going to be annoyed that much. Yeah, exactly. If they added to it, then yeah, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, it's like Pokemon. You don't mind, you know, getting a new generation of Pokemon, as long as you get to keep it. Or at least, as long as, as long as we're keeping the original Pokemon and adding on to it, it's not that bad. Yeah, it's... Yeah, exactly. If every new Pokemon was just the same 150 Pokemon, I'd be getting kind of annoyed. Yeah, but you know, if it's the same 150 Pokemon plus new stuff, it's like, oh, well, yeah, that's it's still new stuff. So, admittedly, people if they, kept, if they kept the old stuff, yeah, people got annoyed with Sword and Shield, with it's like, yeah, we took out like half the Pokedex. Yeah, well, I can understand why people got upset, but at the same time, I understand why they did it. Yeah, arguably, they should probably consider that going forward. It's just simply because of the ecological nature of the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they should be like, well, obviously tropical Pokemon aren't going to be in fucking Antarctica. <laughs> anyway, cutscene time, so time to voice stuff. What's going on? I think this is the only one that doesn't have a boss at the end? Huh? I thought the boss was sort of like... I thought there was a boss. I think at the beginning. Because of the whole gargoyle thing. Look! Something's written on the tablet. The 
Dragon King Bahama? Huh? Oh no, the peninsula that looks like vaguely like a dragon. <laughs> Peninsula, it's sinking. Instead, arises a giant dragon. God. Uh oh, here it comes. I await thee at the summit of North Mountain. Whoosh. Bye! Over there, it's the airship. And I missed two chests. I do not feel like doing that on stream. <laughs> that is a lot of nice bay. Uh. trying to get back into playing Dwarf Fortress, but for some reason it doesn't hold my attention as much as Wormwell does. I, I think it's because of the fact that, like, Dwarf Fortress and RimWorld, while similar games, appeal to slightly different people, because Dwarf Fortress, while really good, as far as I know, the modding community for it wasn't... was mostly just graphical mods. Until oh, recently, no, there's actually pretty big, yeah, there was a pretty big modding community for the old Dwarf Fortress. Like people did a lot with old Dwarf Fortress. Yeah, but like as far as I recall, it wasn't like adding in new races or all this stuff. It was mostly oh, no. just. Are you, are you kidding me? It's, it's like there's a guy who did an entire like from the ground up redesign of the game that made it a space opera. Yeah, but... I remember it was called, like, Lost, Lost Last Twilight or something like that, but it, it was really good, and it wasn't just a graphical overhaul, it was, like, a complete change of the game to uh, a space, like, post-apocalypse. Yeah, but as far as I know, that was one of the few exceptions. Most of them were just... Well, true, I suppose it was a, I suppose it was a exception. But yeah, no, there's plenty of race mods, like, People always are, were doing race mods, like play the goblins, or play elves, or hell, they even added like Elder Scroll races and stuff. Yeah. It was surprisingly simple when, you know, all you had to do was change some ASCII characters. <laughs> you didn't have to draw fancy graphics for your people, but no, it, it's... <sighs> I'm more attachment to my little Rimworld dudes, because in Dwarf Fortress, it's just... There's so many of them, and... Mm -hmm. Their their information is buried behind so many menus that I just see them as as little dudes on the screen. Like I don't get attached to them. Whereas with RimWorld, you can just click on a person, and it's like, well, there's all the information right there. Yeah, and it's like I feel like I I can know them more, and like mm -hmm. you know, they're they're more apparent and prevalent, even though I fully recognize and admit that I think Dwarf Fortress is the much better put-together game, but to be fair, it's been in production for like 20 years, so... Yeah. But oh. it just... I've tried, even with the, the Steam update and the graphics overhaul, it just doesn't hold my attention for very long. I get bored very, very easy. Mm-hmm. Whereas, anyway, obviously, I don't get bored of RimWorld, because I have like fucking 4,000 hours in it. <laughs> 
Anyway, cutscene time. Oh, it's the Wind Dragon. It's Lena. Yay, finally a fourth party member that I needed, like, several hours ago. Lena, are you okay? Come on, wake up. Say something. This body belongs to me! Shit. Lena! What the? I summon you, fell beast, from your millennium long prison between the dimensions. Go forth, Melusu uh, Melusine! X Death! Oh, I. I totally botched X Death's voice. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know I'm evil. My name is Axtef. Yeah. All that once sealed inside the rift is now mine to command. <clears throat> Lena, stop, please. Lena. <laughs> Face destruction at your friend's hands. Death. <laughs> Please excuse me for a moment. I have a turtle infestation to take care of. Also, my cousin, Shredder. He's requesting some assistance as well. Speaking of Vince Turtles, I'm reminded of that. What's the name? Dr. Bakeman? Uh. Which one are you thinking? Uh, like, which villain? The guy, the guy who invented the robots. Yeah, that's Dr. Bakeman, who's also a reference to The Fly. Yeah, okay. Because in the original animated series, he wasn't a bad guy. He just kind of got fucked over by the turtles. Like, kind of their fault. He turned into a villain. Oh, no. Well, there goes free healing at the library. Soon, very soon, the power of the void will be mine completely. The entire earth will kneel before me. <laughs> let, let it stop. Wind Drake, smash! Sacrificing himself. Here you attacked! The demon is expelled from Letta's body. Squished right out. Now! And... Uh, okay, this is... Uh, this is the unedited sprite! I can tell it's beyond that it's right. Uh, she's not wearing spats. Ah.
Okay. Yeah, this is our current problem. Yeah, I don't have... Anything to talk about. Yeah. No. Okay. I was being quiet because I thought you were still doing cutscene stuff. I didn't want to... Yeah. No, it's mostly just... It's a fight. It's a boss fight. Yeah. It's a way to fill time, like... Be annoying if I'm like fucking stupid found. Carly's filling the dead air with something. Yeah. Start of the battle again. Uh. Yeah, uh, Time Mage in 5 has the ability called Return. It starts the battle from the beginning. It's just annoying as crap because it's one of those, like, goddammit moments. That skill was that skill you saw here? Uh, Kryle, uh, had, uh, Entice cast on her. Mm. And so, basically, she, being muddled, slash confused, cast Return. Why is that in the games? <laughs> there are reasons why you would want something like that. Why did they give you a take me back? It's... Uh, Time Mage can be helpful with doing certain setups. And using that uh, actually does some pretty uh, good stuff. It's just one of those situations where it's like, that feels kind of hot garbage. I imagine. It's like, feels bad, man. Now I have to start the map fight over from the beginning because of random bullshit interaction. Yeah.
Okay. I'm now doing better damage to it this time. Good thing. Do everything over. Do it better. Yeah. for that fight, but... Ugh. I don't know, it doesn't seem as bad as the summoners from the pyramid. Yeah. Now it's more cutscene. Luna. But I... Luna. Sarisa. Kryle. The castle. We were... The darkness... It... We know. Don't try to speak. Let it join the party. Alright, now time to shuffle people around. And... Jobs. Kryle. Uh Trying to think of a good thing to put Krile on right now. Zerker? I don't know. <laughs> Zerk. <laughs> Well, I'm trying to remember, does, is there any good reason why you would want them on a Berserker? Like, for anything, like, stat-related? Uh, stat-related? Uh, I believe... Uh, actually, we'd probably want her on Berserker so that she'd learn, Ed, like... Because... Freelancer does actually get boasts uh, boost by completing some jobs. Well, yeah. Um, and I believe Berserker gives the highest boost out of, uh, uh, like, boost the strength out of all the jobs. Which makes sense. Um, but also, I believe Berserker gives you the ability to dual wield? I thought that was Ninja, or am I thinking of a different one? I think no, I'm thinking usually of Ninja tactics. gets dual wield. <laughs> usually? I'm thinking of tactics. Maybe tactics, but I believe, like, I'd have to look at the ability list. But I'm pretty sure Berserker. Or no, it's is it Ninja or is it Monk that gets dual wield of tactics? Uh, well, in this... A ninja gets throw anything. 
yeah, Ninja does definitely gets to throw in this one. Um, you can enter the interdimensional rift and near where t uh, Castle Tycoon used to be. You have to hurry. It won't be much longer before Exeth gains the full power of the void. But Guido said we hadn't the power to fight him and win. Saying that in that voice, it's pretty. Yeah, it's only I, a matter of time before he gets the full power of the void. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem is like annoying Japanese like Gundam mascot character saying that. Well, given the fact that like I can't really do a good female pirate voice that is trying to also imitate a man. Yeah, but no, it's it just. The, the image in my head is one of it's like an annoying Japanese mascot character in an anime just saying that. It's like we have to defeat him before. It's only a matter of time before he gets the power of the void. And like just a really annoying voice and a really garishly colored. Okay, character. there's a difference between the actual Japanese voice actor saying that and then the uh, ocean <laughs> dub of the nineties. <laughs> Good God. We'll need the twelve legendary weapons first, and they're all sealed in the castle of Kuza. There's no time to waste. Castle of Kuza. Castle of Kuza. Admittedly, you don't actually have to get the 12 weapons. It's Final Fantasy, of course you don't. They said no one could control the infinite power of the void. Pathetic oh, yeah, it, it, it came out. I just saw an article earlier. It's like. There's a reason why. Uh, Redfall was so fucking bad. Well, yeah. <laughs> Executive meddling? One part which I didn't realize was how much the studio itself didn't want to do it. Yeah, like, half of Arcane quit because oh. of they, they refused to make this game. So they lost all their veteran talent and, like, half the studio left. Ow! Over the game because they're like, we don't want to make this piece of shit and Xbox is like, you're gonna... So basically, Arcane. Arcane's dead, like, at this point. Yeah, because if the people who were there to make things such as, like, Dishonored and Prey aren't there anymore. Mm -hmm. What's sad is that the concept of Redfall could be done. Yeah, but see, here's here. It came out today. I saw an article. Yeah. They admitted it. The, the reason why it's such a piece of shit and why it was so garbage when it came out is because they executive meddling and they were entirely focused on making it a live service uh. it died because that was the primary reason for the game's existence was how can we make a game that is recurrently monetizable and not how yeah. can we make a good arcane game admittedly one thought that came in of, should we stop so you can finish the cutscene yes please okay power the void heed my call reveal your true form Go forth and destroy everything. Show how absolute your power really is. Absolute power? And... There goes that town. Wait, shit. What? Did you forget something? I was going to say, did you discover something that you shouldn't have forgot? Uh, was that more? Uh, because... Which one's it, more? Uh, the one that Ramu's usually by. I believe that's the town that uh... we have to go grab the, uh... The, the special knife from. No, I thought that was a separate village. Okay. But then again, like, isn't it in the hidden village? No, I thought it was in one of the other villages, but... All the towns are being sucked into the void! Backstep! Oh, 
stop. No, the Mughal village. Those kids. You know, this is going to be a controversial hot take here, but I don't really like Mughals. Oh, okay. Like, are we talking like Final Fantasy VI Mughals, or are we talking like Mughals, Mughals in general? general? Like. I've never really cared for their design. The only Mughal design I've ever liked is also the one that I know they're never going to do again, and that was the, well, the way they designed Mughals in 12. I, I, I don't like the hyperinflated marshmallow look. The puffball look? Yeah, like... Yeah, I, I don't like the Moogles that look like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Mans. With bat wings and a pom-pom. I like the ones in 12. Well, that's the weird part, was the fact that the bat wings and the pom-pom were there well before 12s, but... No! Listen, I'm saying that it... I like the design in 12. I don't like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I'm just saying the Moogles in general... To me, looked like ugly little Stay Puft Marshmallow Men with bat wings and pom poms. I know they've always had the bat wings and pom poms. Yeah. I'm just saying is that I like the way that they were designed in 12 better because they actually look like fucking people, and not weird mascot characters. It, admittedly, like I think in six, it most of them were basically like man-sized bears. For most of them. Because, yeah, like, Mog is supposed to be, like, four foot. And he still has the pom-pom and the bat wings. Yeah, but I don't like them. I don't like that design. <laughs> I think it's ugly. You, would you rather have the Moombas? The Moombas? I don't know what that is. They were an attempt to create a much more edgier, like, cutesy character that was an eight. God, I don't remember them. Wait, uh, that was a mascot character in eight? Yes. Uh, do you I remember didn't... the orange, uh, the little orange tiger people from eight? No. No. Yeah, like, I don't remember them at all. Okay. Well, that's how. Admittedly, they... I don't play eight, so. Yeah, it's like I don't like eight. So. <laughs> Admittedly, like the only reason I remember that is because people were talking about the various quotations mascot characters and the only one that technically that did survive from 8 was not the intended one which is the little alien uh, deedly boppers the poo poo <laughs> little uh, blue teardrop people whereas the intended one was like little tiny orange tiger people called moombas I don't remember either of these creatures. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna have to look this up. Anyway, yeah. continue the cutscene. This is awful. Even a tiny place like Lix, Butts' his hometown. How could anyone do such a thing? Ah! Butts got pissed and. Now going to try and drive the uh, airship straight into the void. Okay, that's one thing that I didn't need to see. Uh, that part of the internet? Moomba Axel. What? Stop! Get a hold of yourself!
critical, which obviously I don't think this is it. Okay, getting back to the topic of Red Falls design. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, the one thing that I realized is is trying to do immersive sim gameplay within a looter shooter mechanic is one of the more difficult things to try to marry together. Yeah, that sounds like a kind of dumb idea. Well, it's not that it couldn't work, but it would be wildly erratic in terms of balance. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you it's... could do it, but it'd be I don't, like... I don't know how you do immersive sim and looter shooter at the same time. Well, I was thinking that one of the things that really makes an immersive sim is the amount of systems that are in place. Like, yeah. we're not just talking like, oh, basic being able to point a gun and shoot, or do other basic things like if we take uh the amount of systems in call of duty it would probably only make a very relatively short list compared to say something like you know uh deus ex or something like that where it's like it's not just simply you know the health of the enemies but it's also the health of objects in the environment itself mm. it's the nature of being able to position, or mantle, or other sort of things uh, over objects. Being able to change one's uh, profile, such as being able to go prone and actually continue going forward. Like, yeah. So, I think it's the amount of systems involved. Like, I also ended up re-watching uh, uh video about comparing Far Cry 2 to Far Cry 5. And like an amazing amount of those systems are indeed graphical in nature, but some of them aren't. Mm. Like uh, just simply how, you know, uh, fire is rendered or spreads or goes through the environment. How grenades work or how grenades affect the environment, such as in Far Cry 2, they actually, you know, caused physics explosions while in Far Cry 5, it's more like, we'll just delete the objects. Yeah. Because we don't want this system getting overloaded. Yeah, that was one of my favorite things about Far Cry 2, was setting off the, the brush fires to blow up stuff. Uh, things like, you know, the fact that running over the savanna high grass means that it's actually becomes low grass, or at least you see a track of where you've been. Yeah. Uh... Uh, yeah, little things like that are what we can immerse in Well, uh, yeah. Well, those things are providing immersion, but not necessarily necessarily, you know, on a, a gameplay deep method, but in terms of actually giving you extra immersion. So, in terms of, you know, graphical fidelity and je ne sais quoi, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Je ne sais quoi. <laughs> Well, it feels like the world is is living and breathing versus, you know, just sort of, oh, this is a video game world. So, the trees are made of concrete versus, oh, yes. they're made of wood. Yeah, the trees are made of concrete. They are the most indestructible objects in the world. I mean, trees are pretty tough. Mm -hmm. But it's things like, like, you know, you go back to Far Cry 2 and they actually had the odds. Did it? Did something happen? Oh. It's raining for their foliage. First, the uh, yeah, it looks. You're cutting in yeah, and out. You're cutting out really bad. I was wondering if that was uh, just me. Is it an internet? Uh, I'm not saying any Problem. dips on my end. Yeah, I can hear Asher okay, but. MPX is cutting it, and there he goes. Yeah, oh boy.
Ah, yes, the... the ultimate accessory Hermes saddles. Hello? 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 It just refused to connect. Uh, it's still a little, a little properly. Well, I don't know how to fix it. Yeah, now it seems to be working okay. Yeah, play in Discord. I've got in the. Oh, there it goes again. No. Oh, what? Sounds like Discord's dropping back. It's back and forth. I mean, the net work. Starts going red again. Yeah. Okay. Seems to be doing Anyway, uh, do we want to continue what I was talking or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the biggest problem is is that just simply trying to provide balance because. While you could have the creative, you know, uh, drop system for an immersive sim, it would be chaotic. Yeah, that's I don't know like, my feeling on it. And it would not work well with the idea of, you know, a live service in a sense of, oh, hey, we'll just simply, you know, uh, provide a service for well, our I people mean... who... Yeah. It works well in the perspective of a live service for somebody who wants to make it infinitely monetizable, i.e. pay to win. Not necessarily. I mean, if it's about creative solutions, suddenly you no longer need, you know, the essentially bigger number problem. You have mastered yeah, the piano. If your, that is if your desire is to actually make an immersive sim and not something that is masquerading as an immersive mm -hmm. sim. Well, Dreadfall was not even an immersive sim barely functioning in this video game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's funny, that's something that I thought about today. It's like, how sad is it that in this year, in, in, in modern day, year of our lord, 2023, that the difference between a good video game and a bad video game is, does it launch? When I click the executable, does it open? fucking gaming industry is that is they can't even make a game that, that works uh, uh. I, I feel like this is mostly because of the whole executive meddling bullshit that's what I'm saying everybody keeps telling me I'm dumb but I'm telling you that other gaming crashes on the way 
not going to wipe out video gaming, which people seem to think that's what I mean when I say that Crash is on the way. No, because indies will always be there. Yeah. But soon it's going to only be indies because all the AAA developers are going to burn out because they can't make money because they keep producing fucking garbage. Considering that uh, one of the things that uh, I decided to, like, because I was being bored, I decided to just do a couple of things with Nintendo, uh, like, Nintendo has this thing of, like, oh, earn several credits that you can get for... Oh, hey, more's still here. <gasps> Which means I can still do this. Nice. Okay, uh, but basically it's... Like, I decided to go check out a game that was, like, demo because, like, I'll get these free credits because it's, like, it helps me create... For, uh, just by doing these things I can get them for free and I can then create my own avatar on the Switch... And it's like, the game, this one was, uh, NBA 2K23, and I'm like, I'll just download it, pop it up for five seconds, and then get rid of it. And here's the bullshit of it. Did it fail to do that? Oh, no, it ha it, it told me, like, you don't have enough space. No, false. And I'm like, What? But, no, apparently, the game requires 44 gigabytes of space. Jesus. Which game? NBA 2K... Uh, 20... Uh, 2K23. Wait. Why would you be downloading NBA 20K? Because I was trying to do something that, uh... Like, just trying to get some free stuff from... Oh. The eShop. Yeah. Ah, here we go! What have we here? Getting this far means you must be very brave. Or... I mean, just... I've been complaining about the size of video games for some time now. Yeah. Or just very lucky. Outside. Which it is. If you think you're brave... Take what's in the crate on the left. But if you know you're a coward, take what's in the one on the right. Oh, what will it like... be? Yep, cuts it. Chicken knife! Gotten! I was gonna say, I think honestly the last couple of years of video game development and movies have proven the old adage that limitations make the art. Yep. Burp. Burp, burp, now burp, that we're burp. in a world where basically there are no limits to budgets and what you can do with it and not even re space requirements or anything. It's like, yeah, essentially make your game as big as you need to. You know, with un unlimited <laughs> more or less budget, and it's like everything's kind of turning to shit. So, currently the chicken knife has plus 126 attack. So, to explain to everybody that's watching... The reason why I've been running from most of the fights is because of this one knife. Admittedly, the, uh, Braver, uh, sword, which was the other one in the left chest, uh, that one no longer has the opposite of where every time you run from a fight, it decreases in strength. But the chicken knife still overall is still going to be better because not only does it increase your attack, it also increases your agility. Let me go. It's been running from a fight. Uh, it will continue to get stronger by running from fights. So, yes, the chicken knife is still crazy good. But, yeah, no. If anything, the whole co uh, quotations gaming collapse that's going to be happening, I believe is that we're going to see a huge, and I do mean huge, um, uh, like, 
a lot of major studios just drop or just close their doors. Yeah. And then it's just going to be, we're going to have the mega studios like EA, where quite literally people are going to be buying the same old game year after year. Oh yeah, some people that continue to buy the same game over and over again with very little change for some stupid reason. Yeah. And because they're like, oh well it has this year's roster, and I'm like, and you're going to buy the same game next year. Well, I mean, people buy fucking, what's the people, like, that at least is something of an excuse to go, it has the current roster of sports ball people. It's like, at least that's an excuse. What's the excuse for people to play fucking the same Call of Duty every year? Admittedly, well, technically, there has been very version differences between certain Call of Duties. Yeah, like, you know when they started going to near sci-fi, sort of, and they projected it eventually. Because people were like, "I don't want sci-fi shooter. If I wanted sci-fi shooter, I'd go play Halo." Which well, they drove that one into the ground too. Yeah, far more so. Yeah. Where is it? But it's one of those situations where it's like quite literally, um, I, I I, still have that acquaintance that's like, Nintendo just needs to stop being a console and just needs to be uh, just turned to Sega and then just make games for Steam. I'm like, why? Yeah, why? Why? And he's like, well, because they're competing up against the Steam Deck. N no, they aren't. They are absolutely are not. And competing against the Steam Deck. And his thing is that, well... And the, the, does he think they're losing? Because I don't think that's the case. Yeah, he thinks Nintendo's losing against the Steam Deck. That's opposite of true. <laughs> uh, and his reasoning is because, well, the Steam Deck has all the superior specifications. Like, it's a computer, you fuckwit. Yeah, it's like... The, and? The, uh, and his thing is like, well, they're both electronics, and electronics, you should be able to customize all of them. And I'm like, have you not heard of dedicated hardware? Yeah, that's dedicated hardware's a thing. And a Nintendo Switch is dedicated hardware that... Well, as much as I don't like it, there is a reason why dedicated hardware exists. Yeah, and I, I've tried to explain to him that, like, by having dedicated hardware for consoles... You're not dealing with the various BS of, like, well, it worked on our computers, and your computer isn't uh, doesn't have the exact same specs as ours, so it's not going to work on yours. And the person's like, well, I, it is working, it's just not working perfectly on mine. So why aren't you trying to get it fixed to work perfectly on mine? It's like... My, yeah. Yeah, that, is, that is the big reason why hardware unity is a thing, and why I, I say it's a valid thing, is, you know, dedicated hardware means that you don't have stupid bullshit like that. Yeah, and it's why I, I'm i not against consoles. I am actually no. for consoles. I mean, I am a PC Master Race convert since, you know, I started playing PC as yeah. an adult, but... That doesn't mean I don't think that there shouldn't be consoles. I just think, you know, why would I buy a console when I have a computer that does eight times more stuff? But that doesn't mean that it's not a valid thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I am one of those people that's like, I can see the purpose of a console. 
Does it mean that I want to play a game on the Nintendo Switch when I can play it on my PC? No. No, because my PC version, uh, the PC version is going to give me a lot more control. But if I can only play the game on the Switch, it then comes into: Do I actively want to play this game? Yeah. Or, like, what about this game makes me interested in it? Can I get it? Like, can I get this on another console? Admittedly, I've been slowly weaning off of the teat of PlayStation because of the fact that everything that's on PlayStation is on PC. Mm hmm. And I mean, that's the reason why I stopped playing Xbox, other than Xbox got garbage, but. Yeah, and that's the. Th <laughs> I, I all their stuff. They they announced that they're making all of their first party stuff simultaneously release on the Xbox and PC. So it's like okay, so there's literally no reason for me to get an Xbox. Yeah. So at this moment in time, the only the only console that I uh, can, that I honestly can go like okay is my Nintendo Switch because it's like it has games that I can get. On the Switch, but I can't necessarily get it on PC. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to name a couple that some people are going to go, um, actually, and I'm going to go, fuck you, that's called region locking, you asshats. Um, Super Robot Wars, barring Super Robot Wars 30, like T, V, and X, I can only get on the Switch with the English on it. Yes, I know it's on Steam, but it's only released for the SEA region. And it is so hard locked that quite literally some people that have din uh, done the VPN or region swapping have gotten their accounts locked or banned by Steam by doing it. Yeah, it's like it's not worth it. And I'm like that's not worth it. Because the PC version is the equivalent, uh, the equivalent of like the collector's editions, where it's like you can have stored MP3s and then select them as the songs that will play during the battles. Would I like that feature? Yes, I would like that in the standard one. Do I want to do uh, do deal with sh uh, chicanery, dealing with trying to get cracked copies of the game? Ugh. <laughs> that's a different problem and that's mostly because of the fact that the few that I encountered were cracked in such a fashion that quite literally the the crackers the the people the that crackers. hey the, the, we, we prefer the term salty in America the code uh, the script kitties <laughs> uh made it so that you had to have a special code from their own website to unlock their cracked version of the game. I'm like... Ah, uh, yeah, that, that bullshit. And I'm like, that's a... And this is the only one I can easily get without joining and spending, like, six months in a community that I'm just going to be sitting there lurking in. Yeah, no, it's, uh... <sighs> to me, those aren't legitimate cracks. If somebody's like, oh... Yeah, here's my crack of this game. Uh, here's the eight. Uh, here's the eighteen step list of things you have to do to bypass uh, the 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 region lock. Oh, and here's the extra plugin you have to run in the background that requires a password that you can only get from me or my friends on my Discord server. It's like no. I'm willing to do the eighteen step thing because there have been some uh, fan translations of games. They're like, okay, you need to have this specific ISO, you need to do this specific process to patch the game, because we're not going to provide you the ISO, we're just going to provide you the steps on how to patch the ISO of that copy of that game. If you have a different version, here's those steps. If you have this version, we're getting to you soon enough. Please wait. <laughs> but... When it's like you have to have a special code, or you have to get this verify, like set up this special verification thing that 
has to verify you have an account with our community. And I'm like, no, fuck that. Why? Also, cutscene time. Sildra, you're, you're alive. Ghost Sildra. Ferris, what are you talking about? Ferris, do you see something? D don't you? Sildra's right there. Sildra's your name? Oh, you're such a good girl. Cryo, you you can see her. Sildra's spirit says she wants to help you, Ferris. Eh? Such a kind soul. Receive the summon monster, Sildra! Now back to talking about various garbage crack stuff. I lost my credit box. But... Well, getting back to, like, the whole thing of, like, have I seen people turn uh, Steam Decks into portable uh, emulation stations? Yes! I actually know a few people who have done that. And they absolutely enjoy it as such. But they do state that it's 100% uh, like something that they wanted to try and do to see if it was possible. Do they say it's the best solution? No. They... I've actually seen some of them outright state that they'd rather just build a, a computer dedicated for emulation than to buy a, st uh, a Steam Deck. Because while the Steam Deck is a good... Uh, a lot easier because of various reasons, because you know uh, they're all going to be the same specifications for the most part. The... Uh, some of them don't allow for so, uh, some emulations that they'd like to do. Considering that one of them I've encountered is basically... Uh, stating that uh, they honestly rather not uh, I'm trying to think of a good way to put it they'd rather not deal with um, some of the oh god Trying to find a good way to say this. Basically, they just found the whole thing of like setting up the Steam Deck as just overt, uh, overtly complicated, uh, overtly complicated. That they'd rather just not deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's what, like make it compatible. Uh. It's, it's more like, of... yeah, sure, technically the Steam Deck is moddable hardware. <laughs> technically. <laughs> it's more of the fact that, like, the one friend that I uh, talked to that did it, uh, he kept uh, the Unix-based system on the uh, Steam Deck, but he had to do a lot of tinkering about to get all the emulators working properly on it, which... If you know Unix or Linux, okay, that's kind of standard, uh, par for the course. But then there's the people that are like, I don't like this, so they go the Windows RT route. And then they have to make sure that the drivers are set up correctly, make sure, and then go about the same thing, but for Windows. And then if you botch any step on it, well, guess what? You have to redo the installation of Windows. Again. Yeah. 
because while Steam does include a way of flashing your hardware back to standard information for the Steam Deck. Well, I mean, yeah, I think most things include a factory reset nowadays. But it was one of those situations where it's like, I've seen some people stated that, yeah, they'd rather not go through the hassle of trying to set up Unix-based emulators. And they didn't feel comfortable trying to install Windows on it and getting it working. Or at least not without a dock plugged into it. And trust me, I've seen... Like, some people are going, like, the official Steam Dock is actually not the best one for it. But then again, I've seen some people just say, like, just get a standard USB-C dock for it and use that instead. Um... But getting back to, like, actual hardware versus, like, computing... At this moment in time, I'd probably say that Xbox, I could see why somebody would buy, still buy an Xbox, is because of the whole integration between Windows and the gaming system, where you can link up your Xbox and treat your com a desktop computer as a media server, like a, a lesser version of Plex. Um, but you can also connect up your, uh, play your Xbox games from your Xbox on your Windows computer, like, uh, Steam, uh, what, uh, what was the feature called where it, they still have it, where you can play your Steam games remotely? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Remote play. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, is that you can still play Xbox games that aren't necessarily on the game uh, on the Windows game store or on Xbox uh, they're still only on Xbox but they allow you to play the games remotely from your Xbox on your PC so that's games like blue dragon and uh what's the famous one uh, something Odyssey Lost Odyssey. I was just gonna say that. Like, fuck, we really need a Lost Odyssey remaster. That game is so yes. Beautiful. That's the thing. Is like, I would like to have, even if it's just like an HD, uh, port. Yeah, like honestly, I kind of would prefer like a port. I don't want them fucking with it and adding modern bullshit into it. Because yeah. I know that's what they do. It's a question of whether they would add modern bullshit. Change character designs. Change character. Change dialogue. Yeah. yeah it, I, I'm not gonna say the Lost Odyssey was a perfect game, but it was like story-wise, fucking wow. It was that game far was more like, unique than a lot of RPGs at the time. Yeah. Yeah, that game was fucking wow from a story perspective, and I really, part of me wants a remaster, but at the same time, part of me doesn't because I know the fucking current hacks in the industry could not resist fucking with it. Changing the main character. Not just that, like, just changing little things to be more in line with modern audiences. I'd rather still keep the story as is, because it's fucking interesting. It's a fucking good story. Well, yeah, but that's sort of like, I think he's coming from the idea of how bad The Last of Us Part 2 affected The Last of Us Part 1, essentially. Yeah. yeah, it's just simply exactly. by association. Well, I mean, and then look what they did when they remade Last of Us again. They they changed it to justify Part Two, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm saying is that if they did a re if they remade, I'm afraid that if they did a remake of Lost Odyssey, they do the same shit. They they change certain key figures, they change characters, they'd add needless detail to, to appeal to the quote-unquote modern audience and it would just ruin the fucking game. It'd be uh. like... It, they, you know what? I bet I know what they do and I'm gonna fucking call it if they ever announce a remake. They're prob they'd probably make Seth Balmoro a lesbian. 
Wasn't she just not interested at all in romance? No, she had a fucking husband. She I did? Mean, she had to, to get, you know, her son. Okay, I didn't get that far. That's my problem. Yeah. She uh, had a husband. <laughs> and then there's games that if they do do it, they wouldn't touch it for the life of them, like Blue Dragon. Because... Well, that's what makes Sandland so weird as an announcement. Yeah. Like, did you hear about that one? No, Sandland one. Okay, Sandland was a short manga by Akira Toriyama. This was, like, right off uh, the heels of him completing Dragon Ball. Okay, so, like, say. like, 90s? I would say late 90s, uh, early aughts. Like, that's where I think it was around. Uh, it might not be directly on the heels, but the idea was that it was a relatively short run. Like, let me just do the Wikipedia searching myself. Well, oh, right, I can't, because it's going to take so damn long to watch. <laughs> Goddamn browser. This is why you keep multiple browsers in your pocket. Yeah, today I learned that Bowser is apparently canonically 34. Wait, what? Yeah, I know. It's just random information I ran across. I cannot confirm its its accuracy, but I just saw a random thing that's like, Bowser's canonically 34 years old. In Mushroom Land years? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't know. Like, do I care whether uh, Bowser is over the hedge or not? Like... It, it's not important. Yeah, you know, it right, doesn't man. matter. It's like, one of those, like, cool question mark? <laughs> I could see the only reason why it would be there is because of some sort of joke in, like, uh, Japanese nomenclature, like a button. Uh, Sanju Shi. Huh. I can't think of anything after that. But, uh, okay, what was I supposed to be with the Uh, Sam. Sam. Oh, Sam Land. Sam Land, there we go. You're touring thing. Uh, because it currently looks like an open world action game, which is interesting. I know nothing about the story, so I couldn't tell, tell you if that's okay. a good idea or not. Oh, wow. It, you were right, David. Oh? It is only one volume. Oh! It was of the original run was from May 22, 2000 to August 28, 2000. That's only like... And it was a weekly publication, or...? Yes, it was Shonen and Jump. They're making a movie out of it? Or a game They're making a video it? game out They're of it. They're making a game out of it. I mean, in some ways, if this is being worked with Akira Toriyama, Toriyama which I can completely believe. Yeah, uh, like, I don't know if that's super cool, or... I don't know, it seems like one of those things of like, yeah, it's literally only 14 chapters long. Which technically would be two Takabans, but maybe they just simply throw it into one because it's so short. Yeah, or it's like a Super Tonkoban. I guess. Well, there is such a thing as doubles. Yeah. Like, you know, uh, Nausicaa was like 400 pages long versus the usual 200. Uh, nothing to say about the... Uh association with the Kiratoriyama in it, but admittedly when I read it, because uh, at the time uh, mm -hmm. me and Asher were getting like the Shonen Jump translated the, uh, the English attempt at doing Shonen Jump comics yeah so Sandland was in that run at the time as well as traditional Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Well, you had traditional Yu-Gi-Oh, you had obviously the big three. Uh, I don't know what else was there, but essentially it was like a cinch. It was, 
You mean Yu Gi Oh before, like, when shit was nuts? It's like, well, yeah, essentially chapter one Yu Gi Oh, yes. Where it's like, let's have a death game. It's like, oh, I saw you taking candid photos of my uh, friend, aka the girl, uh, the token girl. It's like, yes, uh, well, let's play a game. Well, I've I've decided uh, that your punishment is that you will see everything is hyper pixelated. And the last shot is the guy basically doing the like looking up pose, holding his face, screaming, and you see like the heavy pixelation cro uh, across his eyes. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's that, that's a thing. It's like and then they fucking hard pivoted to fucking well, cart. I think it was just simply that uh, his initial run was essentially a very different form. But once he ended up doing uh, the card one, because eventually they did have like the initial run with Seto Kaiba, but it was based off of essentially the death game rules. Mm, Let's yeah. play a shadow game. But uh, that one turned out to be so popular and so well received that eventually just sort of pivoted into that. Yeah. I mean, that's also where the run was, where they also had the dungeon dice. Yeah. Uh, See, I was interested in dungeon dice when it came out, but I just did not fucking understand, like, the rules. Uh, uh, are we talking about the comic rules or the actual no, rules? Like... Yeah, I know I'm futzing around, it's just one of those, like, uh... Trying to figure out what to do? Oh no! I'm being sucked into the, the void! Oh, hey! A CGI anime film adaptation co-produced by Sunrise. Kamikaze Goga and Anima will be released in August 2023. Of... For Sandline. Okay. Also, cutscene time, so... What's that? The rift! Can't fight it! We're being sucked in! Good. We get a free ride. Here we go. I think... Yeah, no, I'm not going to go into the void. Fuck that. Anyway, back to... So, Sandland is getting a small animated OVA, then? Uh, it says anime film, CGI. Okay, so it's getting a film. Well, yeah. I don't know what, what the length it is. It doesn't state. Well, I mean, it could be, like, that length of fil uh, that film that they did for... Um, the Dragon Quest for the Dragon Quest Your Story. Which, that one I think is like an hour and a half. Okay, now I'm trying to figure out what I need to do in order to get the submarine back. Oh, right, I need to go to Firetown. Okay, that's some interesting tidbits about the original novel. Mm. Well, oh. manga. Uh, Toriyama just wanted to draw a manga about an old man and his tank. <laughs> <laughs> because it seems like it was less that it was Shonen Jump trying to, like, okay, this isn't popular, let's end it. It seems like more like... Toriyama tried to go back to doing the weekly Shonen Jump routine and saying, oh yeah, I'll draw everything myself. And, and soon regretted it. Yeah. So he probably ended up... Uh, he did state that it's like it's a, it was supposed to be a short story, so... Yeah. I don't think he intended it to ever go beyond, you know. 
But then again, a like, year. some people like... Th there are people out there that like Dr. Slump over Dragon Ball. <laughs> and, so, because, like, I remember the whole thing of, like, Ed Ed Eddie going, like, uh, who's this a rail character? Oh, yeah. And I go, like, uh, did you... Do you, do you not know of Dr. Slump? And he's like, what the hell is Dr. Slump? It's like, uh, uh okay. I so, started Mangaka's previous manga. Very famous. Yeah, and... Because, like, and it was... Eddie was not the only one that was like, who the fuck is a rail, and why is she taking up an why entire episode? Why is she beating up uh, Vegeta? And, like, when people find out, like, wait, she's an android? Uh, she's an android? No, no, she's a robot with bad eyesight. Yeah. Which I always thought was funny. It's like, you're a robot with bad eyesight. Like, can't you fix that? Nope, because Dr. Slump is kind of a bad roboticist. <laughs> Thank you. Your fucking robot points your eyes. It's like, can you fix my eyes? No. It's like, no. Can, I can try. Nope, you made me even more nearsighted. That, that's not how that was supposed to work. Here's a $3,500 solution for it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I've been looking at that and dreading the thoughts of this is the future of VR. <laughs> Be it's not that's... the future of VR, it's the future of AR. Yeah, I was gonna say, that looks more and like then... reality. Uh, no, it's both. Because... It looks like it's, it's, it's Apple's attempt at the Google Glass, but somehow stupider. Apparently, it has enough power, uh, quotations, Mac power, uh, processing in it to do both VR and AR. And all I could think of is there's going to be some asshole that's going to try and do uh, AR game, uh, like AR MMO stuff. And it's just going to be failing because it's like he's going to be fucking run over within a week. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how many people have died to Pokemon Go, but... I would certainly not say it's non-zero. Yeah. It's, it's definitely a number higher than zero. Well, it's always a question of whether people even knew that it was uh, responsible, because I could see a lot of people just simply denying that, oh yeah, they were staring at their phone. So it was a phone-related death, not necessarily you know, Pokemon Go on the phone. Yeah, they were texting or looking at those TikToks. Yeah, I... That's where some of the problems arise, is that quite literally... I, like, one of the very first memes I saw, and I could not figure out why the, why the fuck it was, other than, like, yeah, no, this is a piece of equipment, I don't know why, but the meme was, Interviewer, uh, are you reading off a script? Interviewee, no. And then it's a picture of the whole, like... Google, uh, Google Glass stuff, and their <laughs> projected face on it. Yeah. And then it's like, once I actually found out that it was a, uh, thing, I was like, oh no, somebody will actually do that. They'll go into an interview with that on their face, have a batch of notes, to answer questions up, and they'll just absolutely refuse to take it off their face. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure most people are going to get super, like, you know, you're not treating me like a human being by doing this. So I'm not going to give you the time of day either. Yeah. And it's just one of those situations where it's like, uh, this... This kind of peeves me off. I'm gonna go grab the magic lamp. I'm gonna go grab the magic lamp. It'll make me feel better.
But, yeah, it, it's one of those situations where it's like... I saw that and I didn't fully understand it until just now. But now looking at it, it's like, uh, I do not want to deal with those, pe it, like, those people in society. Because there will be people that will be wearing that, like, 100% the time. And all There's I could... still people that wear their fucking mask in the car by themselves. Yeah, and there's still people that wear Google Glass because they thought it was really nice. Even though apparently it's now been officially banned. You're not allowed to drive while wearing Google Glass? I mean, that seems no, you... somewhat reasonable. No, you can't even enter certain ex establishments while wearing Google Glass. Oh, interesting. I mean, I can see that because, I mean, it's basically a fucking camera. Yeah, and admittedly, like, most of the ones that I know of are governmental facilities, which, fuck yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, we're not going to allow you to wear wearable cameras on your face. <laughs> and are you stupid? And secure facility. So oh, uh, wait, you work for the government. Yeah, yeah I it's... mean, there's reasons to work for the government that aren't stupid. They do I mean, benefits. somebody has to be to keep something running. Yeah, I mean, they do have good benefits. Uh, not to mention, uh, uh, probably the most com competent people in government are always the tax people. Mm. Yeah. Because they're the ones who are always making sure everybody's paying their taxes. Or at least doing creative accounting to make sure certain people aren't. Yeah. Let's do some, some uh, creative accounting, make sure that the... Oh yeah, I finally found care. that... Uh, initial rumor slash leak that suggested the two million dollars and i think you misunderstood the difference between liquidable assets and cash mm -hmm. okay maybe that is a distinct possibility because the initial thing said two million in cash and considering how much disney essentially relies on you know goodwill and banks for loans yeah. I could easily believe that a lot of it is, you know, essentially smoke and mirrors. We have lots of money. So yeah, you can trust us to get paid. Yeah. They don't even have enough money to make a movie. Well, straight out of the pocket, yes. But yeah. that's fine at the moment because all the movies that they're releasing have already been made. All the movies that they're going to be making... Uh, on the back burner, waiting for, you know, the writer's strike to finish. Or at least, uh, conclude. I heard a conspiracy theory that the writer's strike is actually planned, in part, by Disney to get rid of all the useless people. Actually, that's one of the big things I've heard uh, all around. Essentially, the idea is that allow the writer's strike to happen, and then use, uh, a particular legal concept of, uh, force majeure. Yes. To uh, essentially uh, eliminate the contract. Yeah. Because the idea is that extraneous circumstances have forced us that we can no longer, you know, honor the contract, such as having certain actors available, having certain uh, time slots available, organizational things, mm -hmm. so they can essentially state, okay, contract's null and void. We don't have to pay you. We don't have to honor the contract. Get the fuck out. Essentially. Like, a lot of the writers that are currently striking are finding a lot of their contracts being turned over to Force Majeure that they were relying on the idea of, like, okay, we at least have some safety net. No, you don't. And are now going to social media slash GoFundMe or other such things to get some quick cash to keep them supported so yeah I saw something about that earlier where it's like yeah now they're going to go fund me to say please don't let them end this project because oh wait you have to work to get paid yeah 
admittedly, it's one of those things of, like, I look at some of the whole, like, oh, all these writers, and we still have this kind of garbage plot? Yeah, wow. you're right, it's like, you guys want to be paid more for this? Well, half the problem isn't necessarily the quality of the writing. Yes, I know. Let me just finish. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that they're arguing that they want to have more writers per thing. In other words, they essentially are stating that we want to make it more corporate by putting more cooks in the kitchen, regardless of whether they should be in the kitchen. Uh... Like, you guys are demanding more pay when your output has never been worse. Yeah, let's see how this works out for you, God. And Actually, it, it makes me genuinely wonder whether the previous writer strike has led to the current problem with movies. Oh? Well, think about it. Yes, we had sequels. Yes, we had sequel-itis. You had various movies go on and on and on. You had the Rambo movies. You had, like, Jason vs. Freddy. Things like that. Yeah, hey, I actually like the first Freddy. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. You ended yeah. up having these lot of just you did have sequels, but you did have a lot of original films. Yeah, no, I, I completely get where you're coming from. And a lot of things such as, like, just new IP in general, or it's, you didn't even think of it as IP at the time. It was, like, literally, like, oh, new film, starring new people, your favorite actors. Mm -hmm. But after the previous writer's strike, how much of the films ended up really changing? Yeah, into... Like, recycled garbage or the same arguably idea. one thing that is true is that after the previous writer's strike we did get the, essentially the beginnings of Marvel because mm. didn't the first Iron Man get released in 20, 2006 that was 2008 I'm not sure anymore hmm. it's either like 2006 to 2008 I want to say 2007 and since the writer's strike was in 2007 the one which we're talking about. Uh, and it only lasted, what, like, uh, three months? Something I don't like that. I don't, I don't know. It was relatively short. I don't know. They usually don't try to ex exacerbate it too long because of the scheduling problems that is inherent to it. And a lot of series ended up suffering because of it. Yeah. Well, a lot of shows, movies, films... Like, Heroes is the classic go-to one to say it was destroyed because of the writer's strike. You know I never got into Heroes. Ah, <sighs> admittedly the first season wasn't time. bad, but every subsequent season just felt worse. And it's one of those where it's like, oh, it has a really cool concept to start, but it fell off the cliff. Yeah, well, it had a lot of intrigue, it had a lot of, like, Okay, these are some interesting character premises. Uh, but it was also a thing of like, okay, what's the reason for why this is happening? What's the thing that's going on? Heck, a lot of other shows were actually killed relatively soon after simply because they were trying to follow the lost format of like, oh, let's do some science fiction mystery drama stuff. Yeah. And... Some of them were probably far better than Lost. I just agree with I agree, agree with Doofencock when I when he says that J.J. Abrams is the, is the cinematic antichrist. Uh, anyway, uh, we've hit the two-hour mark, so... Okay. I didn't want to get into most of the other dungeons because I don't want to get too deep into it, but also to you know, actively grind stuff out so that I could, you know, get stuff uh, up and running. Uh, Tuesday stream, we might be back to Valheim. Admittedly, we'll be down one person. Unless he decides to just show up out of nowhere, but that that's, that's hope. Um, outside of that, uh, if it's not Valheim, it's probably going to be finished uh, doing more Deathloop, which apparently that's the last greatest game from Arcane Studios now. 
I mean, it was sort of lukewarm at the time. Yeah. But that then again, it seems like a better shit. concept. Yeah. <laughs> and it it's probably better done. Yeah. It's sad that that's their last fucking game. Huh, not even good. It's like that's their last functional fucking game. And that, I don't know, that's it the says thing. everything when Eddie says, like, oh, yeah, everybody's overreacting about Redfall, but still plays Deathloop over it. And my thoughts are, it's like, I've been listening to the dialogue, and all I can think of is... Is this just a bunch of kids playing pretend, and we're just in their imagination? I was, like, super cringe, Zoomer humor. Zoomer humor. I wouldn't say Zoomer humor. humor, but it's... Would you it's have a... trying to be ever so quippy constantly. Oh, so well, like a Marvel movie. Yeah. It, it's weird because, like, our main character... Uh... Is it Carl? Yes, it's Carl. Carl tends to come off as that bumbling hero type where he can't come up with a good comeback. And his arch nemesis, uh, Julianne, is constantly the one-up quipping rival. And the dialogue, well, it's like, no, this is like something 12-year-olds would say to each other. Well, not 12-year-olds, like 8-year-olds would say to each other. Because they're do doing a play pretend game, it's like, ha ha, I shot you. No, you didn't. I had bulletproof armor on. Well, I had armor-piercing bullets in my gun. Jesus. And it's like, it it's not exact, but it's like that level of quippiness. I'm like, uh. That's, that's, I don't you know. That's not quips. That's a fucking. The one bit of dialogue that really made me not like the dialogue for the game was one character, you know, essentially sounding like the worst boss you could possibly have in a uh, rocket control room. Like, you have this serious guy doing, like, serious checkup, like, check this, check this, turn on this, turn off this. And she just comes in, look, just turn everything on and turn everything off that you need to do that with. And then get like, started on the launch. And, and then she quit. And then she does this horrible, like, countdown where it's all uneven and disinterested. Oh. Then shouts at the other guy, oh, that's your cue to do it. And then goes, three, five, four, five, one, start. That's, Why isn't yeah, it starting? No. This is all your fault. And it's like, Admittedly, if it's supposed to make you dislike her, it's pretty obvious and on the nose, but it's fringy in that sense. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why it's like... That's why everything that, to that's me... That's like, God, what was that? What was the other game, the not the good one? There's there's two that... Anyway, should we end the stream, or did you do that already? Not yet. I was okay. trying to... Yeah, I was going to say... <laughs> I thought we were just chatting. But, In uh, this case, let me finish people. up first before you can finish your thought. Okay. Well, but, I'm just going to finish my thought anyway since people were here for it anyway. But it reminds me of that, uh... What game was it? Outer Wilds and Outer Worlds. I can't remember which one is which because they both have the exact same name. Similar names. and like uh, uh, Outer Wilds, I'm pretty sure, is the 20-minute uh, to Doomsday one. Yeah, that's the one where it's like... doesn't have that kind of dialogue, I would think. Okay, yeah, no. Well, Outer Worlds was the one going like, hey, we're the real guys who, you know, made Fallout games. Yeah, and, and then it was uh, really cringy and bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's the exact Ours. what you were saying about about uh, the game we were just talking about. I forgot the name. That's how we're Deathloop. 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 Deathloop, thank you. That, that level of, of dialogue, I heard somebody call it middle school humor. Yeah, I well, could see. It's a bunch of, like, as... Uh, Asher was saying, a bunch of eight-year-olds copying twelve-year-olds. Yeah, it, it's it's the middle school humor that was really prevalent in in Outer Worlds and made it really fucking cringy. And like the the big example that I can point to is at the very beginning of Outer Worlds when the when the professor hits the button on the the launch pod and mm -hmm. nothing happens. And then he stares at you, and there's an awkward pause, and then he hits the button again, and nothing happens. And he stares at you, and there's an awkward pause, and then he kind of gives that awkward chuckle. And then he does that thing that they always do in middle school humor-style stuff, where he just pounds on the buttons really fast, and then it goes. 
Uh, it's like, yes. This is comedy to these people. This is this is not, this is top tier comedy. I mean, like there are certain uh, certain situations where that's funny, but the situations that I see that as funny are usually we're talking like anthropomorphic ducks, and this is a Disney show for kids. Yeah, exactly. It's it's middle school humor. It's like this is this is something I expect to see in a cartoon. Or something for children, not a game about fighting the corporations. Which, God, could that game have any been any more any more ham fisted? Don't get me no. wrong. I think corporations are fucking, you know, not good. But I get really tired of this ham fisted corporations bad <laughs> that people always fucking do. It's like have an original thought, please. I mean, at like, least present a different reason why corporation bad versus go. Of course, corporation bad. Why would you think any way else? Yeah, or, or at least provide some nuance. But they always go straight for the fucking supervillain route of like, this is so ridiculously over the top that it is now unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I, I will point to a game that, that, at least from what I played of, at least, an updated version of the story, uh, hard space, uh, hard space shipbreaker was, yeah, corporations are bad, but it's treated in the same way that you'd actually encounter in real life, which is, oh yeah, welcome to indentured servitude. You, if you do your job, potentially you can get out, but... You know, I, I felt like, it's not as bad, but I felt her heartbreak shipbreaker was a little ham-fisted, too. I got, I literally, after the game came out, uh -huh. like, the full story, I stopped playing it, because I'm like, this story is so fucking cringe. Admittedly, like, the last time I played it was when they finally introduced the actual exploring your habitat. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I played it again when mm -hmm. 1.0 came out, because I'm like, oh, it's done. Let's see what it's like. And then, like, yeah. I couldn't get over, like, how ham-fisted it all was. And I'm like, yeah, I can see what you guys are trying to do, but do you have to be so on the nose about everything. Anyway, and, we're anyway, still screaming. Yeah, we're let's... Still, we're still... Let's finish. Let, let's close out, and then we can talk about everything else. But, so... Next Tuesday, we hope for Valheim. And maybe we'll be down one, potentially. Uh, if not, that'll probably be another stream of... Uh, Deathloop. Deathloop. Admittedly... Uh, Baron 5X slash Eddie is going to probably be swapping from breaking the loop to protecting the loop, aka the invader route, just to show it off a bit. Uh, Thursday is going to be the same. Friday, we're going to try and do more Final Fantasy V, aka get a couple of those weapons and then move on to try and getting a few more and collecting a few rest of the stuff while gearing up for the final fights. Uh, we do have a podcast that came out today. Um, that's listenable on all major podcasts, so Apple, Google, Spotify. Uh, all of our streams are archived on YouTube, and I'd probably say that's about it. Spot the Google spot. Google spot. All right. Night, everybody. Bye.